Change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Let's slowly walk through the... Oh, what's going on? What's that? What's going on in there? Oh, no. Got you. <laughs> This is what it sounds like when you pick kale below zero. <laughs> it's totally frozen out here. <laughs> Look at the leaf, it's like totally solid. It just snaps right off. It was um, about five below in Fahrenheit last night and now it's just a little bit warmer than that. And my fingers are frozen as I break the kale, snap the frozen kale off of the, off of the plants. But you can see it's still nice and green. It's not dead, it's just frozen. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. I never get sick of these, ever. Every bite is delicious. So it's a green smoothie and a green jacket day today. I'm trying to get myself out the door to head up to Woodford to work on the snowshoe course for the race I'm hosting on Sunday. And it's a cold one. Uh, most of you in the northern part of the United States know what I'm talking about. We got some serious Arctic air coming down and temperatures uh, in the single digits or below zero uh, for a lot of the northern part of the U.S. And a lot of people around here are just like huddled inside, don't want to go out but I've got to go up to the mountains where it's even colder. It's about 10 degrees colder up there. <clears throat> and I've got to hang out in the snow, uh, sometimes laying on the ground, cutting trees below the snow line um, for hours. That's what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. And that may sound crazy. And it may sound like the last thing on earth that anyone would ever want to do. Um, so I want to talk about that, like how I get myself out there. And I know I have tons of videos on this, but I'll tell you about my process today. We as human beings tend to compress time and we compress activity, all right? There is the step that's actually in front of you or the step that's actually underneath your foot right now. And then there is the project itself or the amount of time it's going to take to complete the project. Our prefrontal cortex is always, that's the cognitive part of our brain, it's always keeping track of that. Keeping track of the end result and keeping track of the amount of time it's going to take. And unfortunately, what your prefrontal cortex often does is it compresses that into one moment. It takes all that time, all that effort, all those tasks, all those steps and compresses them under great heat and pressure into a diamond. One diamond-like thought. And what do we know about diamonds? They're really hard. And what do we know about getting yourself outside to run when it's really cold or when it's raining and cold? It's really hard. Most of the New Year's resolutions and life changes that people take on are really hard because of that time compression. We're compressing the whole thing into a diamond. And those diamonds look beautiful. We love diamonds, right? When we think about losing 100 pounds, when we think about getting fit, when we think about changing our life in some dramatic, wonderful way, it's like a diamond that we're holding out there. Like, this is amazing. Look at it. It's beautiful. And it's also really hard. So what I do is I decompress. I create space. I pull back. And instead of thinking about the race on Sunday and how much work I have to do, or thinking about how cold it's gonna be and how long I'm gonna be out there, I simply focus on getting dressed, getting fueled up, getting out the door, getting in the car, turning on an audiobook, and boom, 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 and before you know it, I'm at the mountain, open the door, grab your saw, put on your snowshoes, start walking, find the trail, cut a tree, whatever and I go through the steps 
So if you're in a spot today where the thing you have to do is really hard, decompress it, create some space, separate it. Don't think about the result. Don't think about the whole thing and try to carry all of that weight. What's the first step? If it's going outside and running or biking or doing something in the cold, first step is getting dressed. That's it. So get dressed and then add another layer on top of what you just did <laughs> or two. See my video on how to dress for cold weather running. All right. First thing, get dressed. Second thing, go outside and feel it. Put your arms back, put your head back and go into the victory pose. You know, when you see a runner in the Olympics and they win a race, they cross the finish line, they throw their arms up, they widen their chest, they put their head back, that victory finish line stance, get into that pose. Outside, fully dressed, feel it. Get victorious and feel the cold. Because we're afraid of that. We're afraid of what it's going to be like out in that cold. So feel it. Get out there and be victorious. I'm outside now and I'm feeling the cold. And is it bad? Mm, it's cold. But is it doable? Yeah. See, we're so afraid of what that experience is going to be like. So give yourself a little dose of that experience in a celebratory fashion. Get used to how it feels. And then the story of how hard it's going to be just starts going away because it doesn't have any weight. Because you're now in the cold and you're like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And then start running, start walking, start biking. Because we, again, compressed all that. So decompress it. Just take a few running steps. How is it? Well, it's not so bad to take a few running steps. All right, so just do that. Just keep doing that again and again and again until you forget that you're running. So if you find it's really hard to get yourself to do something, it's because you compressed the whole project, all the steps and all the time and all the discomfort into one tiny little diamond of a thought. I'm taking a little break in the middle of the woods in Woodford. Uh, clearing some new single track trail and having some great thoughts listening to a new book called Unworthy by Anneli Rufus and I really love the way she writes. Uh, the first book of hers that I read is called Party of One and it's all about being a loner and being an introvert. Not that I would know anything about that. I mean, <laughs> I don't spend most of my time alone in the woods or anything. Hmm. Anyway, it's a really, really good book so check out A Party of One. And also check out uh, Unworthy by Anneli Rufus. So as I'm hanging out here in the woods, taking a little, little breather on this comfy snowpack, I'm thinking a lot about a comment that I got yesterday on the vlog, vlog, <laughs> that kind of really got me last night and caused all kinds of rumination and self-incrimination, fun stuff like that. Someone asked me if I was a narcissist because I made a 10 minute video about brushing my teeth. And I immediately got triggered, totally triggered, had this full body physical reaction, just like all red in the face, hair standing up, sick to my stomach, heart instantly tightening. Before I had a single thought, it was like an immediate response. And this is what a lot of people don't realize that when you have a trigger, it usually happens faster than you can think about it. Like the physical reaction is faster than your thoughts uh, because the primitive part of your brain is faster than your cognitive brain. So by the time you realize what's happening, you're already physically triggered as I was last night. So I had a conversation with a really good friend last night about that, about being a narcissist, something that I've always feared about myself. And you may have heard me talk about this in other videos where I talk about shyness being narcissism because it's an intense self-focus. But what I've come to learn since then is that shyness is not narcissism. Yes, it is an intense self-focus, but uh, the difference is that narcissism is an intense self-focus combined with a really wonderful appreciation of self. You just think you're great. You think you're poop don't stink. In fact, it smells really good. Um, 
and clearly I suffer from intense feelings of unworthiness so I'm not a narcissist although I am self-focused and often self-absorbed but uh, not because I think I'm great but because of the opposite but I'm working on that and this whole thought spiral in my head just really got me thinking about holding a camera up to your face and recording your thoughts and sharing your life with people the, this vlog is such a strange concept to me uh, just letting people into my life and not offering a lesson not offering something of value not offering a tool like I'm just gonna show them my life god that's so boring and it's kind of weird I mean, the whole idea of YouTube literally the name itself YouTube it's like hey watch me and I've been doing that for six years now uh, but it's in that whole time six years what am I talking about I started in 2005 before there was a YouTube I was using other video sharing sites um, I started YouTube in 2006 but anyway this whole time it's felt really strange holding a camera and up and talking to it and what you don't get to see in my videos is all the stuff that I edit out like me talking to the camera and saying hello probably at least 15 times every video and starting the video again and again and again minimum of 15 times because I don't feel comfortable talking to the camera and I'm really nervous and I'm worried that I don't have anything to say and I'm worried that I'm wasting your time and I have all those fears and usually after talking to the camera for 15 takes I'll start to warm up I'll start to feel comfortable I'll forget the cameras there uh, and I just let it go and that's what you end up seeing as a video people think that I'm really comfortable in front of the camera and that's not the case at all I do not love being on the camera um, it scares the crap out of me still after all this time uh, because I'm worried that I don't have a lot to contribute you know those are my fears my insecurities my triggers my stories my patterning and my hard wiring so here I am making another vlog talking about my life but last night I thought okay I just gotta stop this I gotta stop YouTube altogether I gotta stop the vlog it is narcissistic potentially and and I that's not the contribution that I want to have in the world uh, I want to be generous and kind and affectionate and inclusive with people. Their stories matter. What's going on in their life matters, not just mine. But then I came to the realization that maybe there is something of value here. Maybe there's something you recognize in my life or how I describe it or how I deal with it that you can relate to that helps you in some way so it's not so much about me just saying hey look at me but hey look and see if there's something that you recognize in yourself that maybe you can learn from as I learn from it so I'm gonna keep going uh, and that always has been my focus that is what I'm up to in these videos but when someone and they might have even been joking the way I read that comment it looks like they might have been joking and if you see this video <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're joking or not but because um, it got me to think and yeah I don't I don't want to be selfish and I don't want to be self-absorbed I want to I want to be part of a community and that's what I'm trying to create but I'm going about it as an introvert and as somebody who's really shy and and someone that doesn't have a whole lot of confidence in themselves but I do have confidence in the stuff I learn I have confidence in the research that I do and the you know, studies that I read and the books that I read and some really extraordinarily smart people doing some really really good work and it's helped me so much and I like sharing that not because I believe in me but because I believe in what they're doing and how it's helped me so there you go you decide what I am but uh, I guess the day that people stop sending me emails telling me that my videos have value then I'll stop making them but uh, until then here we go alright ha ah, sun's going down I'm watching the sunset through the trees it's beautiful it's quiet I'm all alone up here
it's cold, but I don't care because I'm all bundled up. And I'm having a good time. All right. So here is an example. This is something that people are scared to death of. It's a cold day. And I'm in the middle of the woods, off trail, wandering around, uh, creating my own trail. And I don't even have gloves on. <laughs> I'm not even wearing gloves right now. So I'm holding a microphone, so there you can. Oh, and by the way, uh, I'm using an iPhone to film this, iPhone 6. But the sound isn't that great, so I use a Zoom One, Zoom H1 recorder, uh, which I put a little earmuff on to block the wind. And that gives much better sound, and then I sync them up on the computer later. Because uh, the sound on the iPhone is not great, so I always bring that guy along. But see, I'm, I'm so bundled up that even though the temperature is like two degrees up here, uh, my hands aren't cold, not at all, uh, because of all the layers I'm wearing. So don't be scared of getting outside in the winter. Uh, just bundle up, layer up, and uh, enjoy it and have fun with it. All right? I love you. Bye. <laughs>